Hey YouTube people! Today we're taking a look at this, the Lenovo second generation yoga book. Now we looked at the original yoga book and I really liked it and I really wanted to love it, but it wasn't something that I could use full term on. Um, but this one is the second iteration and this is the C930, not to be confused, <laughs> this is really confusing, there's two C930s in Lenovo's lineup. There's a C930 2-in-1 yoga which is a 13-inch convertible device, and there's the C930 Yoga Book, which is this device. Okay, so let's take a look at this thing. First thing to note is this is a very slim device. It is only 1.71 pounds, which makes it very portable. It's super thin. If we were to compare it to something like the Surface Pro, you can see that the Surface Pro kind of dwarfs it. So if we put it on the top, side by side, you can see that it's quite a bit smaller. The Surface is quite a bit bigger. They're both pretty wieldy when you hold them, but this is pretty lightweight. The closest thing in comparison that that I would say would be this device, the Surface Go. They're roughly the same size and form factor, both have pens, and it's really close to the Surface Go. If we look on the side, we have a volume rocker, a power button, and a USB-C. has ports on both sides in the same spot, which is really nice. You have an SD card reader as well and some ventilation slash speakers. And of course we've got that really nice looking watch band hinge. It looks really good. Also included is this pen. It's an active device it has a quadruple A battery inside and it kind of took some cues from Surface Pro. It's supposed to be able to held to the side of the device but it does not work as intended in my estimation. It's not nearly as good an implementation. Hangs on to the front there, kind of out of the side but it's very wobbly and I haven't been able to find a good point that makes it feel like that's actually going to stay on there. You can see how fiddly that is. It's like they designed it in a design meeting and put it in the design, but then they didn't actually test it before it went to production. So it's barely functioning. So I would rather just put that in your bag or you're going to lose it and it's going to fall off. But it does come with it and it's not an extra cost. And the pen works on both of the displays. So Let's go ahead and take a look at those. But first, let's see this little trick that Lenovo's come up with. This is what they call their knock-knock feature. In fact, the yoga book was really hard to pry open because it's so thin and you can't really get purchase on your fingertips on them. So they come up with this, the knock-knock. And it opens right up. So that's kind of neat, makes, makes things easier. And it reveals our two displays, which look really nice. At the top, we've got a 2650 by 1600 display, which is a, quite a high resolution. And the e-reader portion is a 1920 by 1080 display, 10.8 inches on both of those. Now that, that, I mean, that size of e-ink display is not very common, and it is pretty nice. Let's go ahead and, and turn the device back on so we can take a better look at this. Now, let's go ahead and log in. So, this is the unique portion of this yoga book. You have a menu along the top. It goes from keyboard to note-taking to e-reading and settings. Let's go into the settings for just a minute because there's some cool things. There's keyboard vibration in here 
And I'm at the lowest setting. It is really nice to have because it gives you feedback when you're typing. The loudest setting, it I mean, it makes quite a strange rumble. It feels a, a little cheap, the, the, the motion device, but it does give you really nice feedback while you're typing, which is, is what you need for a, dis, for a keyboard display like this. Over here, we've got e-ink image settings. And unfortunately, this just lets you change your background. It'd be really nice to let you address your contrast in this section, but they don't let you do that. Uh, it's, it's something I would suggest that they would add because as we'll see later in the e-reading portion, I find the images really tend to show up a little bit too dark. It always adjusts that contrast to be way darker and you lose a little bit of the details. So let's look at our knock to open. That's just an on or off feature, legal information and help. So let's talk about the other downfall of this device, which is a small thing, but this fingerprint reader right here, I saw some other reviews that said, oh, it doesn't work very well. And I figured, eh, they're just not registering their fingers right. Like it's probably not an issue, but no, it is not a good device. I don't know what went wrong here, but it literally is unusable. It almost deserves a recall. I mean, it deserves a recall. If, if, if you wanted to use a fingerprint enabled device, look elsewhere because you do not want to use this one. It, it's no joke. So let's go back to the keyboard settings because you can change the keyboard settings to uh, between these modern and high contrast ones. And this modern keyboard, I really like. E-ink displays take a minute to kind of refresh the screen in general. So there we go, keyboard style changed. And now we've got a very cool, in fact, I like this keyboard the best out of all of them. It looks pretty unique and the high contrast looks really awesome. So how well can you type on this thing? Well, let's go ahead and open Notepad. Just as a sample, and I'm gonna type the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. And there we go. It works. It does all right. And you can tell that that vibrational feedback that it gives you is very quick. There's no lag between touching and it vibrating, which really helps you have the feedback you need to make good typing decisions. And one of the good things, if I can focus here, is the fact that you have a full keyboard layout. I mean, you've got brightness buttons, all your accessory and media buttons on here. F1 through F12, it really feels like a standard Lenovo keyboard layout. There's nothing finicky about it. It's actually quite good. And well, as good as you could expect a keyboard to be on an e-ink display. One of the only kind of touchy points with it is the mouse. So you can see there's this little button here that you tap it and then the trackpad appears, which is kind of strange, but it works. I would recommend that you turn up your mouse sensitivity so you can move that cursor around a little bit quicker because the second you get to the edge of that track point, it kind of vibrates and then to let you know that it's not gonna work anymore and you have to kind of move your finger back. And they, they thought it through really well. It's it's still finicky though. It's not as good as I wish it was. So for example, once you start typing, the, the trackpad disappears. So you might forget that it went away and start hitting the space bar instead of actually touching the trackpad, which, you know, there's some menu items that will click OK when you hit the space bar. So it, it can be complicated. But you can do complicated right click and left click maneuvers and you can do it, it works. Sometimes when I'm selecting files, I do like a control shift type thing and it will do it, it will handle multi touches. But the second you barely mess up or the trackpad disappears unexpectedly, you've suddenly accidentally selected the wrong files and you're deleting the wrong stuff. So that can be an issue, but it does work reasonably well. 
I think the only thing that they could potentially do to improve this is perhaps offering some sort of membrane, maybe something that pulls out the bottom and pulls around at the top and then lays over the keyboard to give you just a little bit of tactile feedback to get your key placement. It would be nice. You can see they, the J and the F have the little underline. Like normally we have those underlines are like physical plastic or something that's like to help you find home row but like they put it there in e-ink i don't i don't know why they did that it looks kind of funny but i mean you don't get any tactical feedback off of that but anyways it would be really nice if it had some sort of membrane you know maybe they either fold it over or let you slap on or slap off that would be kind of cool to see it might help the typing experience a little bit but that's the keyboard. Let's talk performance. Because this is an i5, but it is the Core M i5. And but if you compared it to the the Surface Go, which I say it's its biggest competitor, the Surface Go has a Pentium Gold, but it tops out at 1.6 gigahertz despite being about the same architecture. But the but the clock speed really is not that great on the Surface Go. It's great for note taking. It's great for media consumption. But the second you try to run a real program, that 1.6 gigahertz becomes a huge limitation to do real work. The burst performance and responsiveness is not as good. So on this one, it's much better. In fact, it they they have a reasonable clock speed on this thing. So if we go ahead and look at the performance tab. Uh, if I kind of wiggle this around, you can see that the clock speed peaks at 2.8 gigahertz, which is almost double the, the Surface Go. So it really helps that burst performance, and it's it's quite nice. I mean, it, you, it's usable. Obviously, it can't sustain peak loads or anything like that. It's still not like a workhorse, but it feels really responsive, more responsive than the Surface Go, and um, way better than the previous Yoga Book, which actually could run Android or Windows. But what Lenovo found is 70% of the time, people are using that original Yoga Book um, in desktop mode. So they, they beefed up the components that are really going to help that desktop mode People just like the form factor. So it's really quite unique and nice. So performance capabilities aside, let's go ahead and look at the main feature here in terms of the pen on the e-ink display. And you can write on it. And it does a decent job, but it is kind of wonky in and of itself. For example, let me switch to the pen. If I start drawing something, it shows up initially kind of blocky, and then a smoothing algorithm goes over the top of it after and smooths it out. So it is a little bit jarring, I'd say. So you kind of write it and then you see it change after you write it and it's delayed anyways, but it's okay. And you can use your eraser to kind of get rid of things. And obviously e-ink doesn't update super quickly, so it's kind of slow, but you can copy and paste between the e-ink display and the main display. But it's, I mean, that's so clunky. Who wants to write a whole bunch of things and then on an e-ink display, try to select those things and then copy them over. It's not ideal in any way. I mean, it's cool you can do it. I mean, it's uh, why not have the capability there? But hey, why won't you just do this? Let's just fold this over and let's go ahead and let's just use OneNote. And it's already in the software where you want it to be. There's, I don't find the ink display, I, I don't see any reason to use it. it. That's just me. I find that the screen over here on the LCD side works much better. It's responsive. You can draw better. You have access to tools that function much quicker 
you can do whatever you want to do you've got color you can erase it's quick there's literally no reason to write on the e-ink side of this thing i'm not saying the ink display is useless i'm just saying that for note taking you want to be on the lcd side of things that's just me um i think most of you agree with that though so where the ink device does excel is when you're actually using it for consuming books, comics, manga, whatever you want to read on this. This is the one device that can do it all. And it can do it quite well. For example, let's go into the e-reader mode. And you can see right here, we have a comic book. It's just kind of a sample EPUB comic book example. And you can even turn it to portrait mode. And you can see that even though it's a little dark, uh, the contrast errors on, on being dark, it's nice and clear. And it looks great. There's no complaints here. Uh, yet, I mean, we'll get into some of the complaints in a second here. But you can also put it into a two panel mode to look at page one and page two. Uh, let me go to an actual ebook here so you can see that side by side mode in action. And this is the other thing that's really absolutely amazing about this device is the fact that you can browse your entire C drive. Whenever the top is unlocked, you can browse the C drive below and find any EPUB, Mobi. PDF files that are on your device. And that's something that really makes this device unique as far as an e-reader goes. So I've just got some sample ebooks on here. So we'll just go into Little Bo Peep. There we go. And there's that side-by-side -side mode. You can view pages. That side-by-side -side mode actually is large enough that it looks great. You can do that side-by-side -side mode and it's totally not an issue. The Kindle or a Kobo or a, you know things like that, those have max maybe a 7.9 inch display and they're really not able to have side by side this much content clearly displayed, which makes this a really premium e-reader experience. So Lenovo has provided some updates on this device as far as the e-reader is concerned, but there's still some fatal flaws with the implementation of their EPUB and Mobi. It's great that it supports PDF, Mobi, and EPUB, but uh, if you're using uh, any this device for comic books, the EPUB format is not great. And let me show you what I mean by that. So I just have kind of this sample test comic book on here. And let's pull up the EPUB version. And let me switch back to our one panel view. So you can see here, um, that there are white spaces on the top and bottom of this EPUB book. And that's a problem because you lose a lot of the detail because it shrunk up. But if I go back and look at the PDF conversion of this, you can see it takes up the full screen. So that's obviously much more preferable because especially when you turn it sideways, um, you're able to really see the entire panel filled out, which is what you want when you're reading comic books. So you're still going to have to convert your EPUB comic books over to something like a PDF format. Definitely you're gonna have to convert it to the PDF format if you want to view that. So um, anyways, I, I plan on doing another video on how you can uh, really manage your content on this device because I do think it has major potential as the device that can be the ultimate media consumption device. If you're someone who likes reading um, 
or consuming comics, this device is pretty much the only thing on the market that does, has any type of capability of serving both of those functions and the potential to be your main PC. I mean, this this could technically do that for you, which is a really unique proposition. Um, for me personally, I don't think that it's something that I would want to use as my main device. I think this would be something that I may want to use if I was traveling. Um, this is pretty much the perfect airplane companion because not only does it have a really great vibrant, vibrant display that you could watch a movie on it, but you could also, you know, read a book on it and get plenty of battery life and um, it all folds up into being just a super small tight package uh, that is really quite compelling. So, um, if I had to put my stamp on this, I would say only get this if you consume way more than you content create or you really want to have an e-reader device all in one and are willing to make compromises on the keyboard. Uh, because really, something like the Surface Go is really pretty compelling as well and frankly much cheaper. This thing has a retail price of $999, but uh, it's also tends to be on sale. Right now it's on sale at Best Buy for uh, $700, which really puts it more in range with something like the Surface Go. Um, but if you want to get work done on this device, unless you primarily use a pen, uh, this is going to be more of a companion device for media consumption or note taking. So it, it's really a niche device, but it does do very, very well in so many categories that I could, I could definitely see someone using this as their primary device but it would take a certain type of person who does not type a lot. So uh, that's my thoughts on the yoga book. Uh, I plan on doing a, another video just to kind of show how you can set up this e-ink display for books and comics.